Welcome back. With inflation still high, the debate about whether businesses are gouging consumers continues. So here's a look at inflation of profits by the numbers. It's true that total profit has risen. According to StatsCan, non-financial industries saw their profit rise 22% from mid-2021 to mid-2022 as inflation was taking hold. That amounted to a 0.5% increase in profit margin overall. But it was a different story depending on which part of the economy you look at. The five most profitable sectors saw a jump of 185% in their profitability. Those sectors also enjoyed a profit margin increase of 7.6%. That includes sectors like oil and gas, mining and transportation. Meanwhile, the least profitable sectors saw a decline in income, down 88.4% as inflation rose. That includes sectors like agriculture, publishing, and motor vehicle manufacturing. In those sectors, the margin of profit declined sharply, down 9%. Research from the Bank of Canada showed that profit was contributing less than one-tenth the rate of inflation and that price markups were actually declining as inflation rose in 2022. That data is just one of several studies that show that price increases by Canadian companies were just a small part of the inflationary story, but the myth of corporate greedflation persists. David McDonald is a senior economist at the Canadian Centre for Policy Alternatives. David, thanks for being with us. Sure thing. Thanks for having me. And one of the reasons I wanted to talk to you is that I've seen you talk about uh, kind of corporate-led inflation. So I want to kind of challenge and ask the question, why do we keep talking about it when many studies done by StatsCan and the Bank of Canada and other private economists say corporate greed is not leading inflation here? Yeah, so one of the things I looked at was a question of of the increased prices that were retained in Canada in particular industries due to higher markups, for instance, where do they go, right? Who got them? Uh, money goes somewhere, and so it, and so it's going to end up in somebody's pockets. Uh, you know, one of the arguments was that workers are benefiting through higher wages, uh, and that's a possibility to be sure. But corporate profits are uh, also an area where you know inflation that is retained in particular sectors can go. Uh, so the you know the, the last full approach that I looked at went through 2022. And over that period, you know, 40% of the inflationary gains that were retained in particular industries went to profit. Uh, but a third went to, to higher wages, uh, and the difference went to other financial costs. And so uh, this doesn't tell you whether those companies had the power to increase, uh, you know, the, the increase prices, mm -hmm. um, whether they had monopoly control, for instance. Uh, it just tells you potentially where they, they were in the right place at the right time, that prices were going up, they put their prices up too, and maybe they put a little bit of extra on top and yeah. uh, and retain the difference as profits. And, and we should note, um, you know, it's a bit technical, but that little extra it can take a very little to make a big difference. Uh, we know it's there's kind of an amplification when um, your your cost your price over your cost uh, makes a big difference to profitability. So that does matter if they just want a tiny bit over their costs, it can make a big difference to them. Do we want meddling in pricing, though? We've seen a little bit of that where politicians kind of put their hands up and say, you know, we're going to try to get in here and, and sort of help determine the right price for things. Is that dangerous? It can be challenging, you know, to go into a grocery store and say the price of peppers is two dollars a pound and the price of onions is three dollars a pound. That's not generally the approach I think that you want to take uh, just because, uh, you know, companies raise prices doesn't mean we can't surtax them on the additional profits that they may have made on those increases in prices. And that's actually exactly what we've done on the banking insurance companies going forward. I mean, mm -hmm. they pay now a surtax uh, that that it came out of the pandemic, but it, it is nominally also pulling in additional money from uh, uh, additional profits brought yeah. in by inflation. Um, you know, this was one of the industries that was one of the big beneficiaries, but it certainly wasn't the biggest. Uh, oil and gas and oil refining in particular were bigger. Mm -hmm. uh, the real estate industry made a fair amount over this period as well. Uh, you know, so potentially there's an argument for this tax that's in a particular sector to be yeah. expanded more broadly, um, even to things like grocery stores. And this is certainly something under consideration. So there is certainly a precedent for. Only, only about thirty seconds here, David. But does it make you uncomfortable at all that that it will, a surtax like that is also basically saying we're going to determine centrally the right amount of profit? What is enough profit uh, when you know for a healthy economy? We do want companies to be profitable. That's the goal. 
Yeah, I mean, we do want companies to make profits, but we don't want them to make excess profits and make profits just because they're in the right place at the right time. I mean, those those kinds of rents, as it were, are, are exactly the right type of thing you want to target for corporate profits because it's not like we're inhibiting, um, you know, some sort of corporate innovation. Mm-hmm. They just happen to be in the right place at the right time uh, to, to benefit from this boom in inflation. That's exactly the type of thing that's a great target for corporate taxation and, and excess profits taxes. So good to have you, David. Always appreciate your time. Thanks for having me. David McDonald, Senior Economist at the Canadian Centre for Policy Alternatives. Company profit isn't a bad thing, especially if it's driven by higher productivity, which raises the whole economy's standard of living. But that only really happens in companies if companies take profit and reinvest in their own businesses. And that is something that has not been happening in Canada, and not for years. Economists are sounding alarms on a problem that could be a drag on the whole Canadian economy. Bill Robson is the CEO of the C.D. Howe Institute. Bill, thanks for being with us. My pleasure, Sorry, It's a, a d- dismal topic, but it, it, uh, we, it, it's an important one. It yeah. is, but let's start with this question of uh, corporate profit isn't bad. It's actually what you want. Um, and yet we do keep hearing this theme that that is to blame for inflation. Why do you think this keeps surfacing? Well, I think the fact that investment is low is a big problem and, and does tie into inflation because uh, if, if central banks are printing a lot of money and governments are doing a lot of stimulating of the economy and you've got the productive capacity to produce the goods and services, uh, then prices won't rise uh, the way they did in Canada. So we were pushing against our, our limits and the, and the low investment is continuing to be a problem. And what concerns me is that we're not seeing the same thing in the United States. We're not seeing the same thing abroad. So Canada seems to be uniquely stuck. So let's drill into that a bit. Uh, We want businesses to be profitable because we want people to find it worthwhile to be in business, first of all. But the so-called excess profit people talk about, typically that works for everybody if it's reinvested uh, in new businesses, in new equipment, uh, in growth and expansion that makes new jobs. Uh, So profit can be a very good thing. But when that's not happening, what's the scenario? We are not seeing Canadian businesses making those investments. Well, no, we're, we're not seeing them doing it at anything like the level that we would like to see. And just to make this concrete for people, uh, what we're talking about when we talk about these investments is actual new capital. Uh, so it could be warehouses, it could be excavators, it could be motor vehicles, it could be uh, information technology, it could be the software that we're using to communicate right now. And in Canada, the investment rates have been so low since the middle of the last decade that the amount of capital per worker is falling. Mm -hmm. And that's no recipe for uh, rising wages. It's certainly not good for competitiveness. And so the profits that are being earned, first of all, businesses are are just don't seem to be respond, you know, seeing the incentives uh, and they don't seem to be responding to them. So what is the solution to this? How do we get businesses doing what should be in their own interest? Well, I think it's a matter of both uh, carrots and sticks. Uh, on, on the carrot side, I think we've got problems with taxes in Canada being a little high. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think because uh, other countries have been lowering their, their taxes on business, and so we had a competitive edge and we've kind of lost it. Um, and then there's the whole stick side as well. People have observed, and I think rightly, that there's not a lot of competitive pressure in some parts of the Canadian economy. And right now, the third thing that I'd add to it is just there's such uncertainty. Uh, if you're trying to invest in a big capital project in Canada right now uh, with with, with governments kind of lurching around and, and making new policy announcements all the time and sometimes even weaponizing the tax system. You know, financial institutions are unpopular this year. We're going to hit them with an extra tax. Right. Uh, what that does is it scares people. It makes them back away from investments. OK, only 30 seconds here. But on that point, we hear this talk of that surtax on excess profit, financial uh, services already being hit with it. Others could be a target bill. If they're not putting the profit back into the economy and their own businesses, is that fair game? Should it be taxed away? Well, I don't think that the governments are doing a very good job of investing the money any better. I mean, they call everything they do investments. The federal government thinks it's an investment when they pay a consultant to advise them how to spend less mm. money on and on consultants. So, no, I think the money is in the businesses. And what we need, I said, carrots and sticks, because we want to see more of that capital uh, or we're going to be stuck in neutral here in Canada mm-hmm. while other countries are forging ahead. Bill Robson, great to have you with us. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Bill Robson is CEO of the C.D. Howe Institute. 
Coming up, big telcos will be forced to share their networks with smaller rivals. Is that a victory for Canadian consumers or an unfair blow to the incumbents? That's still ahead. But first, like the rude uncle who only shows up on holidays, Adidas had to deal with its Yeezy problem again. In its outlook for the year, the shoemaker said it may write off up to $320 million of Yeezy shoes it has sitting in inventory after it cut ties with Kanye West. Adidas has been quietly selling some of its Yeezy stock, a move that helped it narrow its projected loss for this year, but the cost of its association with West continues to be counted. And unlike your weird uncle, companies can choose whom they invite to the table. We're back after this.